Now that we've talked a bit more about lines, let's start talking about planes and the equations for planes in spaces. In space, excuse me. So we're going to start out with this idea of a normal vector. So a normal vector, which we're going to denote as n. So don't use n for anything else other than denoting the normal vector. Okay, is a vector that is perpendicular to a plane in space. So we want to imagine we've got this plane, and I've got a vector, and let's just imagine here. Here's this vector, and this vector it's perpendicular to the plane. And what that means is like, say for example, I've got this vector, let's call this point P, and we'll call this vector PQ. So PQ and my normal vector N are in fact perpendicular to each other. Pick another vector on the plane. Say for example, we'll choose, um, we'll make this S. PS and N are also perpendicular to one another, okay? Because PS is on the plane. So any vector that I have actually is going to end up being perpendicular to that normal vector. And that's the definition of a normal vector. So now that we talked about the normal vector, what we can do is we can kind of utilize that in order to set up the equation for the plane. So remember, I've got this plane, okay, out in space, and I've got its normal vector, n, okay? And I wanna imagine that any vector that is perpendicular to n. I know that's not the best vector for that. Now let's make it a little bit better. Any vector that's perpendicular to n is going to end up being on this plane. Okay, so we'll call this q. And we'll just imagine that q kind of just switches and changes. This might be a q. And this is p, that's a point on the plane. Okay, so I have the point x naught, y naught, z naught. And I have my normal vector, okay, n. And I'm going to write n as a, b, and c. Okay? Now, what I know is, is that if two vectors, okay, are perpendicular to each other, are orthogonal, right? Remember, that's the same word that we use for perpendicular, orthogonal, then, okay, their dot product equals zero. Okay, so the dot product ends up equaling zero. So what I'm going to do is I've got my point x, and I'm going to say q. We're just going to let q be, it varies. It's a variable. So it's going to be x, y, and z. Okay, it's this variable, um, this variable point. And so we can imagine all of the vectors that we construct with p and q to be, so our vector p, q will equal x minus x naught, y minus y naught, and z minus z naught, right? Because that's how we form a direction vector. We just subtract the components of each vector individually. So using this fact, we're going to get that pq, this random vector that happens to be on the plane, dotted with n is going to equal zero. So any, um, any point x, y, okay, so any point x, y, z that fulfills this equation is on is on the plane. And that's really super helpful for us because then all we've got to do is find that dot product, right? Okay, so n is a, b, c. So n or p, q dotted with n although it doesn't really matter. Remember that uh, the dot product is actually commutative. PQ dotted with N is gonna end up being A times X minus X naught plus B times B uh, times Y minus Y naught plus C times Z minus Z naught. Go ahead and do that on your own. That way you, you can see that that's the case. And then that's all gonna equal zero. And so this is called the standard form. Standard form and basically what you should notice is that if this is our normal vector, those are the x, y, z components for the normal vector. And this is our point P that's on the, on the graph. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna like kind of go in here and I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. So I'm gonna get, this is gonna be ax minus ax naught plus by minus by naught plus cz minus CZ naught equals D, or excuse me, equals zero. 
And so if I actually put all these together, I get AX plus BY plus CZ equals AX naught plus BY naught plus CZ naught, okay? And we're gonna call this thing here, we're gonna let that equal D. This is what we call our general form. So that's the general form for the equation is when we actually go in and we get our variables x, y, and z on one side and then all of our constants, which ax naught, by naught, and z, cz naught are gonna be on the other side, okay? This one here, pretty simple once you figured out what the normal value is. This is just a little bit of algebra and so we'll actually do both. So what we just wanna notice is that we're gonna take um, a general vector, okay, and we'll dot it with n and that'll give us our equation right here, okay? Let's see it in action. I think actually it'll make things a lot simpler. So let's say for, suppose that we wanna find the equation for the plane containing the points P, Q, and R, okay? In both standard and general form. So now we've got something, and what we're gonna to have to do here is we've got a little bit of extra work that we've gotta do, but we're just gonna layer that PQ dot N equals zero, right? Is going to give us um, our equation. So our, our standard form, is gonna be a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught and equals zero, all right? So we'll take that and I'm gonna just select p to be my point. So p is gonna be my x naught y naught z naught so it's gonna be one, one, negative two. Now what I need to do is I actually need to find the normal vector. Now the normal vector is perpendicular or it's orthogonal to all of the vectors in the plane, okay? So to find the normal vector, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross PQ with, let's say for example, let's do PR. Let's do uh, PQ uh, dotted with PR, right? So we're gonna get these two vectors, all right, in space, and then we're gonna find a normal vector to both of them. All right, and it doesn't actually matter. It's gonna be normal to all the vectors on the plane, okay? Um, and this is one of the reasons why we say that we in fact need two vectors in order to determine the equation of a plane, is because if we have two vectors, we can actually find the normal vector, okay, that will give us the equation, okay? So we're gonna find PQ, so PQ, the vector, is gonna end up equaling, and it'll be negative one, or zero minus one, 2 minus 1, and then negative 2 minus 1, right? Same equation that we've been using in order to find uh, our component vectors for a while now. And then we'll utilize PR. So PR will end up equaling negative 1 minus 1, um, negative 1 minus 1, and 0 minus negative 2. So here we have negative 1, 1, negative 3 is PR, and we have now negative 2, negative 2, 2 is PR, okay? Now we're going to find the normal vector, N, and N is going to end up being PQ cross PR, and that's because if we take the cross product of two vectors, we get a vector that's orthogonal to two of them. So find the two vectors, and then take their cross product in order to find the normal. We got i, j, and k, negative one, one, negative three, negative two, negative two, two. And so this ends up giving me now, um, I've got one times two is two minus six. So two minus six is negative four i. Then negative one times two is negative two minus negative two times negative three. So negative two minus six is negative eight j. And actually this is a minus. So remember it's a minus a negative when we have our j value. And then plus for our k that's negative one times negative two, that's two, okay? Minus a negative two, so it ends up being four k. And let's just check that to make sure that it's correct. So there's our normal vector. And since it's our normal vector, A is gonna then equal negative four, B equals, um, in this case, positive eight, right? Because this is negative, negative, that's positive eight. 
and then c is going to equal 4. Awesome. So now I've got my normal vector, okay, or I've got my normal vector, I've got my components in the normal vector, and now I'm just going to plug it into the equation. And here's p. So I've got negative 4 times x, x minus 1, plus, and then this is going to be 8 times x, uh, y minus 1, plus z times, and excuse me, not z, plus 4 times z plus 2. And that'll equal 0. And all I did here was I took, here's p. p is my point that I selected. You can use any one of the points. They're all going to work. And then here's my normal vector, right? And I just plugged a, b, and c in there. Now all I've got to do is I've just got to do a little bit of algebra. I've got negative 4x plus 4 plus 8y minus 8 plus 4z plus 8 equals 0. The negative 8 and the positive 8 uh, cancel each other out. This is going to become a negative 4. We'll move it over to the other side. So we get negative 4x plus 8y plus 4z equals negative 4. So this thing here, this is our standard form. And this is our general form. And what we've done here is we've now utilized the knowledge about the normal in order to find the equation um, for the plane. Okay, And so that's how we go about finding the equation of the plane. This is actually just kind of one of the general ways that we're going to do it. If you think about it, that what we're going to do here is you're going to generate two vectors using the points that you have there. Find, their nor uh, find the normal vector by taking their cross product. You'll find the normal vector by taking the cross product. And then you'll plug in the values for the normal vector into the standard form and the value for one of the points. Any one of the points that you want into the other equation. And you'll end up getting the equation for, um, for the plane. So the normal vector is going to play another role when we want to find the distance between a plane and a point. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine we've got a plane in space somewhere, and we've got a point. Okay, We've got this point. We're going to call it point P. Okay, And this, um, we know the, basically we know the equation for the plane. Okay, or we know information about the plane. And so we've got a point, say we've got Q on the plane, and we can generate a vector QP here. Point of the plane out to P, that generates a vector. Now, in addition to that, we know that we have this normal vector. We've got N. N is the normal vector. Okay? So it's normal to, um, to the plane. And what I want to do is I want to imagine that I've got this line, it goes out to this point R, and R is kind of directly below. We think about it, it's, it's perpendicular to P and still on the plane. So this generates for us a triangle. We get a triangle, we have R, we just picked the point, we picked the point directly below P, okay? Q is another point on the plane, and then N is our normal vector. Now, this length right here, that's the distance, D, the distance from the plane to the point. That's what we're looking for. Now if I look at this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that this is, um, R is perpendicular, or, or the line PR is perpendicular to the plane. The normal is perpendicular to the plane, so they're actually in the same direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a projection. I'm going to project onto N. Right? I'm going to create this projection, and so this line right here, which is what we're looking for, that's the projection onto N of, in this case, PQ, this line PQ. Right? We'll take PQ, we project it on, and that gives us that horizontal distance that we're looking for. Okay, Or actually gives us the vector that we're looking for. And so that length that I want, D, is going to then just equal the magnitude of the projection of n onto p the projection of pq onto n okay and if you remember our equation for that magnitude is going to end up equaling pq the vector dotted with the other vector n all divided by in this case the magnitude of n 
And that's actually what that projection is. So that's basically, this equation right here is gonna give us that distance, the distance we're looking for. It's actually, I would say, even easier than um, working with finding the distance between a line and that point. All right, so let's try one out. So let's say, for example, that we wanna find the distance between the point P equal to 3, 1, 2, and the plane given by X minus 2Y plus Z equals 5. So remember that the equation for our plane is A times X um, minus X naught plus B times Y minus Y naught plus Z times Z minus Z naught, or excuse me, plus C times Z minus Z naught equals zero, okay? And the normal vector is gonna be then A, B, C. And then we have a point, and with that point, we're gonna call that point Q, and that's gonna end up being X naught, Y naught, Z naught. Now, if I've got this form and it's in my general form, you know what? It's we're missing like the X naught, Y naught, Z naught. A, B, and C is there. We've got one, negative two, one. The coefficients in front of A, B, and C, or in front of X, Y, and Z, are in fact going to be our normal vector. It's actually not all that hard to in fact then go in and put this into um, a form that will allow us to get our X naught, Y naught, Z naught. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this be X minus two Y plus Z minus five equals zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna set it equal to zero. And then I'm basically gonna take this and I'm gonna have, all right, this is gonna be one times X minus zero, right? Cause there's, you know, it's gonna subtract zero minus two times Y minus zero plus one times Z minus five equals zero, right? And so all I did here, because there's a one in front of here, I didn't have to factor anything out. I just made this one times Z minus five, and that then uh, gave me my, my third part of the standard form. What you can see now is that my normal vector N is one, negative two, one, which we could have found earlier before. And then my point that I've got here, Q, is gonna equal zero, zero, negative five. So I got zero, zero, negative five, which is awesome because I'm gonna need Q in order to find PQ. Now, D, my distance, is gonna be the absolute value of PQ dotted with N, divided through by the magnitude of N. The magnitude of N, okay, oh, by the way, this is not negative five, this is positive five. I keep doing that. It's positive five, okay, is our Q, not bad. So n, the magnitude of n is just gonna be the square root of one squared plus negative two squared plus one squared, right? Use that distance formula. So this is gonna end up being the square root of six. Then we're gonna find PQ dotted with n, okay? Um, well, I gotta go find PQ first. So PQ is gonna equal, let's take this and we're gonna have um, P is three, one, two. So we'll have three minus zero, one minus zero, and two minus five. That gives me my component form. And so that equals three, one, negative three. And now we'll find that dot product. So PQ dotted with N will end up equaling, it's gonna be three, one, negative three, dotted with, um, one, negative two, one. And this then it gives me three plus negative two plus negative three, which equals, I've got zero, that's gonna be negative two. Now all I gotta do is I've just gotta plug that into my formula right here with, along with the magnitude of N. So I've got D, my distance, is gonna equal the absolute value of negative two divided by the square root of six or two over root six, and that's my distance. Let's take a look at another one. Let's find the distance between the points P, five, negative one, zero, and the plane given by four X plus two Y minus Z equals three. Okay, so again, one of the things that we can do here, we're gonna rewrite our equation. I've got four X minus two Y minus Z equals, or minus three equals zero. And so consequently, what I know is that if I let X equal zero and Y equal zero, this is just another way to do this, that zero, that zero, then Z is going to end up equaling 
positive three to get zero, right? And let me show you why that that's gonna happen with our equation. I got four x, right? And that'll be x minus zero if I want, minus two times y minus zero, minus one, and then I'm gonna have to factor out a one, so this is gonna become z plus three, and that equals zero, okay? So my normal vector, n, is equal to four, negative two, negative one, and my point on the graph, Q, is gonna equal zero, zero, and this will then be negative three. Zero, zero, negative three. Oh, excuse me, um, yeah, zero, zero, negative three, that's right. Now that I've got that, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find PQ. So PQ is then just gonna equal, it'll be zero minus five, zero minus a negative one, and negative three minus zero. Okay, so that's negative five, one, negative three, and that's my PQ vector. I have N, I've got PQ, I can go find PQ dotted with N, so that's gonna end up being negative five, one, negative three, dotted with four, negative two, negative one, and that ends up equaling uh, negative 20, negative 20 plus negative two plus three, which ends up equaling um, negative 19. Magnitude of n now is gonna equal the square root of four squared plus negative two squared plus negative one squared, and so that equals the square root of 21. So my distance now, d, is gonna equal 19, because we're gonna take the absolute value, or the absolute value of negative 19 over the square root of 21, which is 19 over root 21. So let's say, for example, that we wanna find the distance between the point P equal to 3, 1, 2, and the plane given by x minus 2y plus z equals 5. So remember that the equation for our plane is a times x um, minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus z times z minus z naught, or excuse me, plus c times z minus z naught equals 0. Okay? And the normal vector is going to be then a, b, c. And then we have a point, and with that point, we're gonna call that point Q, and that's gonna end up being X naught, Y naught, Z naught. Now, if I've got this form and it's in my general form, you know what, it's, we're missing like the X naught, Y naught, Z naught. A, B, and C is there. We've got one, negative two, one. The coefficients in front of A, B, and C, or in front of X, Y, and Z, are in fact going to be our normal vector. It's actually not all that hard to, in fact, then go in and put this into um, a form that will allow us to get our x naught, y naught, z naught. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this be x minus 2y plus z minus 5 equals 0. Okay, so I'm just going to set it equal to 0. And then I'm basically going to take this and I'm going to have, all right, this is going to be 1 times x minus 0, right? Because there's, you know, it's going to subtract 0, minus 2 times y minus 0 plus one times z minus five equals zero, right? And so all I did here, because there's a one in front of here, I didn't have to factor anything out, I just made this one times z minus five, and that then uh, gave me my, my third part of the standard form. What you can see now is that my normal vector n is one, negative two, one, which we could have found earlier before, and then my point that I've got here, Q, is going to equal 0, 0, negative 5. So I got 0, 0, negative 5, which is awesome because I'm going to need Q in order to find PQ. Now, D, my distance, is going to be the absolute value of PQ dotted with N divided through by the magnitude of N. The magnitude of N, okay, Oh, by the way, this is not negative 5. This is positive 5. I keep doing that. It's positive 5. Okay, is our Q. My bad. 
So n, the magnitude of n is just going to be the square root of 1 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 1 squared. Right, use that distance formula. So this is going to end up being the square root of 6. Then we're going to find pq dotted with n. Okay. Um, well, i got to go find pq first. So pq is going to equal, let's take this, and we're going to have um, p is 3, 1, 2. So we'll have 3 minus 0, 1 minus 0, and 2 minus 5. That gives me my component form. And so that equals 3, 1, negative 3. And now we'll find that dot product. So PQ dotted with N will end up equaling, it's going to be 3, 1, negative 3 dotted with um, 1, negative 2, 1. And this then it gives me 3 plus negative 2 plus negative 3, which equals, I've got 0, that's going to be negative 2. Now all i got to do is I've just got to plug that into my formula right here with, along with the magnitude of n. So I've got d, my distance, is going to equal the absolute value of negative 2 divided by the square root of 6 or 2 over root 6, and that's my distance. So now let's, the last thing we want to do is to determine the angle between two planes. So let's say for example I've got plane 1, plane 1 looks like this, okay, and then I've got another plane that intersects the plane, right, the two angles, the two planes actually are not parallel, we'll talk about that in just a moment. The two the planes are not parallel, so they actually have an intersection, and so then they've got an angle, right, which we'll call theta right here, okay, that's theta. And we want to figure out, we want to find theta. What we're going to do is we're actually going to utilize the fact that we've got normal vectors, okay? And so we'll, we can use the normal vectors for the plane in order to figure out the, um, that angle that actually exists between the two planes. So one I'll try out, I've got an, uh, a normal vector here, okay? There's my normal, and we'll call that N1. And then for this plane, I've got N2, okay? There's the normal two, and if you kind of think about it, we've got they also have theta, okay? And theta happens to be the angle between those two vectors too, okay? It kind of makes sense if you really think about it because essentially like what you've got, you've got these two planes and then what you'll do is you'll kind of construct, in, in, in a manner of speaking, you're basically kind of constructing um, uh, a, you've got, uh, you're basically kind of constructing like a parallelogram here and that'll actually allow us to see that those two angles actually are the same angle. So we, we're looking to find theta, okay? And so it turns out that theta, right? So the angle between N1 and N2 is also theta. It actually turns out it's the same, okay? So what we want to do is we want to go, okay, well, how do I find that? Well, we already know how to find that. Remember, we have this. We know that cosine theta is going to equal, and this was from an earlier lesson, is going to be N1 dotted with N2 divided by the magnitude of N1 and the magnitude of N2, right? It's that really crucial equation that I told you about earlier, okay? So we know that the cosine of theta is going to equal that, and so that's actually how we're going to go out and find theta. So theta will end up being cosine inverse of that, of, of that equation. So let's try this out. Let's suppose we want to find the angle between x plus 2y minus z equals 0 and 2x plus 4y minus 2z equals 10. Now, what we can see here, we'll go through and we'll find our normal vector. So n1 is going to equal 1, 2, negative 1. And n2, my normal vector 2, is going to equal 2, 4, negative 2. And now what I want to do now is I want to pause for a second and inspect the two vectors. It turns out that n1 is equal to 2 times n2. They're scalar multiples. So the two vectors are parallel. There's no angle between them. The two vectors are parallel. And that means actually the two planes are parallel. So the two planes are parallel. And so we can't actually do this one. 
Nope. Nine. Let's take a look at another one. Let's say we want to find the angle between the planes 2x minus 3y plus 2z equals 3 and 6x plus 2y minus 3z equals 1. Normal 1 is going to equal 2, negative 3, 2. Normal 2 is going to equal 6, 2, negative 3. So we'll go in, we'll say, okay, well, let's take a look. Are they scalar multiples of each other? Well, no, like six divided by two is three, but two divided by negative three is not three. They're not scalar multiples of each other. So these two planes are actually gonna intersect. So cosine theta is gonna equal, right? Remember, it's gonna be N1 dotted with N2. Okay, an absolute value, all divided by the magnitude of N1 and the magnitude of N2. So I'll find the magnitude of N1 first. And that equals the square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 2 squared. So that's 4, 8, and then plus 9, so that's root 17. And then the magnitude of n2 is going to equal the square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. And that ends up being equal to the square root of 49, which equals 7. Now I'm going to find the dot product, okay? So I've got 2, negative 3, 2, and maybe I should have done this first, dotted with 6, 2, negative 3. So this will end up equaling 12 plus negative 6 plus negative 6, and that ends up equaling 0. If the dot product between two vectors is equal to 0, right, the normals are orthogonal. So theta equals 90 degrees. They're orthogonal, right? So meaning that the two normals, they are perpendicular to each other, and that means that the planes are also perpendicular to each other. So let's find the angle between these two planes, x plus y plus z equals 4, and x minus 3y plus 5z equals 1. So normal 1 equals 1, 1, 1. Normal 2 is going to equal 1, negative 3, 5. Okay. Now, let's actually do N1 dotted with N2 first. Okay. N1 dotted with N2 is going to end up being 1 times 1. That's 1 plus negative 3 plus 5. And so that ends up equaling, that's 2, 3. So it ends up equaling 3. Great. Not 0, so I know it's not 90. 90. Now I need to find the magnitude of N1, which is gonna be the square root of one squared plus one squared plus one squared, which equals root three. And then the magnitude of N2, which equals the square root of one squared plus negative three squared plus five squared. That's 25, 26, and so that's root 35. So cosine theta is going to equal, it'll be the absolute value of the dot product. So the absolute value of 3 divided by root 3 times root 35. And that means that theta is going to equal cosine inverse of 3 over the square root of, and um, this is going to end up being square root of 105. And that will then end up equaling 72 point, and we'll just round it two decimal places, 0.98 degrees. And there it is. And that's how we find the angle between the two planes. We've got an equation for it, all right? And it just flows from understanding how the normal works and some of that geometry. So I know the geometry is a little tricky or a little bit difficult for, uh, for this, but um, it's okay, right? Like as we do more and more of it, you're going to get better and better and better at working at the geometry. So in this video, we've actually ended up talking about quite a lot. One, we started out with this idea of the normal vector, and that normal vector is actually crucial because that normal vector is the thing that kind of helps us to define the plane. It basically gives us kind of the, the slope of the plane in, in whatever way we want. And 
that normal vector, how we find it oftentimes is that we find two vectors on the plane in any way that we can, and we'll take their cross product, and that gives me the normal vector, okay? Once I have that normal vector, most of the work that we're gonna be doing with planes can be figured out, right, okay? And we did things like we wanted to find the, the distance between a point and the plane, and we utilized the normal vector for that. We wanted to find the angle between um, two planes, and that actually, uh, the normal vector allowed us to do that too. Or we wanted to find the line of the intersection, and utilizing the normal vector actually allowed us to do that as well. So that normal vector is actually a crucial piece of information that we get from uh, understanding what the vectors on the plane or understanding the equation of the plane, okay? So you wanna like get real comfortable with understanding the normal and all of the different things that we can actually do with it. So this ends the lecture.